Welcome to Picture Healer Channel. This is Shi Tian. So, what exactly is Feng Shui? That's one of the most frequently asked questions in this channel, and I like to talk about that today in this video. It seems like a very simple question, but everyone has different view of Feng Shui, so the answer is not simple and straightforward. There are many different layers of Feng Shui. Some are the truths, some are the myths. Even my perception of Feng Shui changes throughout the years. So I'm just going to share what I think Feng Shui is or is not. When we talk about Feng Shui, most people will think about placing a money toad, money frog, or some aquarium or other Feng Shui cures or enhancers. And that's one aspect of Feng Shui. You can certainly change the energy of the house by placing Feng Shui cures or enhancers, but that's not complete picture of Feng Shui. For traditional Chinese Feng Shui, we have to look at the basic schools. There are two basic type of traditional Chinese Feng Shui schools. One is based on the form or the landscape, the shape, such as a mountain and river and ocean, the geography of the location, because a tall mountain or big ocean or river can carry certain qi. And if your house is located in a certain direction of the mountain or river, it can bring different energy. So that's the landscape or the feng school of feng shui. And the other type is by calculation, such as the eight mansion feng shui or the eight houses feng shui. Based on the eight different directions, they have different charts, and you can find out your most auspicious and inauspicious directions. And it's the same with the flying star feng shui. We do it by calculation of the chart or the year, the timing. So that's another major school of feng shui. It's called the compass feng shui. You base everything on compass and calculation. And there is also a variation of the feng shui that's very popular in Western culture. It's a black sect bagua feng shui. It's based on a traditional bagua chart and you just overlay it on your house. Regardless of your actual house directions on the map, so that one is a little bit different and a little bit easier to understand. I have videos on different type of feng shui. I will link in the description box below if you are interested. Ideally, you should know every school and uh, combine them and pick what's useful for you. But in reality, it's very difficult because some schools have conflicting theories and it can get very confusing if you try to combine them. But it's still useful if you want to learn feng shui and you have all the tools in your hand. In some situations, it makes more sense to use a certain school. Sometimes you can combine them without problems and sometimes you just have to find what's most important at that moment and then ignore all the conflicting information. Another important part about feng shui is the timing. That means your fortune and luck will change according to different year, months, day, and even hour. And that's one aspect we usually forget because our life comes in cycles. This time you have all the luck and everything is in your favor. And there's also time you have to slow down and just focus in on enrich yourself and not trying to compete with everybody. Every year we have annual charts from the Flying Star Feng Shui. So that's one example of timing in Feng Shui. And that's why traditionally Chinese people like to refer to a Feng Shui calendar or the lunar calendar with all the auspicious and inauspicious activities so they can plan their important events better. If you're interested in the Feng Shui calendar, check out my 2020 Red Year Feng Shui Planner available on Amazon. The link will be in the description box. And I also have free download for April, May, and June 
Feng Shui calendar. You can sign up with the link in the description box below. So talking about the timing, we should not forget your birth chart. That's one important part of the Feng Shui too. Your birth chart, including the year, month, day, and hour, can form the Ba Zi or the Four Pillars chart. And you can get a lot of information by analyzing your birth chart. Even just by your birth year, you can find out your animal sign and a lot of feng shui are related to animal signs. Since we are talking about the Ba Zi birth chart and the Chinese zodiac astrology, you probably get the impression that feng shui is fortune telling. That's not totally wrong either. There's a part of feng shui that's related to analyzing your birth chart and predict your future according to the chart. Because both feng shui and Chinese fortune telling are based on similar theories, the yin and yang, and the ba gua, and the yi jing, and the five elements, and understanding all the power of different stars in the sky. So it does have a lot of overlap, but feng shui is not just fortune telling either. Another profession that's related to feng shui is Chinese medicine, including acupuncture and Chinese herb. The basic theory is the same. They all come from the yin and yang, the ba gua, yi jing, and the five element. That's the way the Chinese medicine analyzes different disease, different symptoms, and different body types. Because the theory is so different from the modern day science and medicine, that's why a lot of people have a hard time understanding feng shui or Chinese medicine. Some people will think feng shui or Chinese medicine is nonsense, and other people will think they are magical. There are limits on both Chinese medicine and Western medicine, and there are also benefits on both sides. And it's the same with feng shui. Sometimes you just want to enhance your life, not just increasing productivity or making money or learning a certain skill. The Chinese feng shui has a different approach to enhance your life. And you don't have to understand all the feng shui theory to benefit from it. Everybody has a different interpretation of feng shui, depending on your background and your experience. If you are drawn to certain part of the feng shui practice, or you know something is working for you, then you really don't need to worry about other people's opinion. Just practice the part of feng shui that makes sense to you and benefits you, and that's all it matters. It doesn't have to be a certain school or understanding all the theory. But if you are interested, you can certainly learn more and educate yourself more. Just know there's a big learning curve if you want to study traditional Chinese feng shui. And I believe everyone has a different journey, so you don't have to try to copy other people or feeling behind or not enough. The purpose of feng shui is to enhance your life and reduce the chance of problems or disasters. So those are my ideas of what feng shui is. It's about mindful living, be aware of our environment, and the timing of our current situation. The feng shui help us see where we are currently and where we want to be. So we have a sense of how we are going to get there. Thank you for watching today and enjoy your feng shui journey.